Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the C++ for Java developers series. So in this episode, I'm going to quickly show how to compile and link on a Linux system. I'm using the Windows subsystem for Linux, so some things may be a little bit different if you're actually running a Linux machine, but the commands should all be the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is change directory to my home directory. And you can see that I already have CPP practice in here. And I'm going to make another directory and just call this CPP practice YouTube. Then I'm going to go ahead and launch Visual Studio Code just by typing in code dot. And I have an extension installed right now that allows me to modify Windows subsystem for Linux files from Visual Studio Code. And it looks like I actually launched this in the wrong directory. <laughs> make sure to change to that directory that you just created and then launch Visual Studio Code if you are following along this way. Okay, anyways, once we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new file, call this main.cpp, and following this, you can go back to the last episode because most of the stuff in here will be the same as the last episode. I just wanna show how to compile on Linux. So one of the first differences I would do is I would build a build.sh file, which is basically just a shell bash script, and you can check if a directory exists. So this is sort of following the Windows version of what I did. We basically just want to create a binaries directory and a binaries int directory for intermediate binaries. And so we can do that just by typing in if not directory. So actually that's dash D. Uh, we can do dot slash bin. So this will basically check and see if we have a bin directory. We'll say then uh, make directory dot slash bin. And you could probably just do bin if you want to. Then we'll say else, actually, we'll end it there. So then we'll just say fi. Then we'll say if not dash directory. And then we'll say dot slash bin dash int. And if we don't have this, then we'll say then make directory bin dash int. And then we'll say fi to end that if statement. So if we were to run this build.sh file, if I just type in build, and actually I have to do dot slash build dot sh and on the windows subsystem for linux it's a little bit weird i believe you should just be able to type that in if you're on a linux machine but i have to type in bash and then do that and anyways you'll see in visual studio code we got a bin and a bin dash in directory which is good because that's exactly what we wanted to happen now we can store all our compiled intermediate files inside the bin dash int and we can uh move the resultant files the final binaries into our bin folder Okay, and if you don't know what all this means, check out the previous video because I go over this in a lot more depth. But basically what we can now do is we can just say push directory dot slash bin dash int. So we're basically going to change to bin slash int and push that directory under our stack. Then when we pop directory, we'll change back to our previous directory, which is good. And then inside here, what we're going to say is gcc dash c, and we want to compile dot dot slash main dot cpp. Okay, now this is where the main differences happen. Uh, usually, if you were on Linux, I believe you should just be able to say dash "-o", which is output file, and then call it something like main. And this will generate your executable on your Linux machine, your binary. Uh, on the Windows subsystem for Linux, I actually have to separate the compiling and linking explicitly. So I have to add in an extra command here that says gcc dash, uh, and then we're gonna go main dot "-o", dash o main and so what this says is uh, this command will generate a main dot o which is an object file and i'll go over all this stuff in the future episode for both systems because this is mainly the same aside from the binary contents <laughs> and then we say produce an output file main so this is the linking phase this is the compiling phase i alluded to what that is in the previous episode they are separate and i'll go over this in more detail about what exactly happens Anyways, though, just to see what happens, let's do this first. So if we just do gcc dash c dot dot slash main dot cpp, first of all, we need to put something in here. So I'll say hash include stood io dot h int main print f hello world slash n return zero. And once again, if you don't know what this means, go to the previous episode. I go over all this in much greater depth. Anyways, let's go into this right here and we'll say bash dot slash build dot sh or if you're on linux just dot slash build dot sh then we get these two little commands this is just when we push directory this is when we pop directory and if we look in a bin int we have a main dot o file and if i look into here and i say i want to open it anyways 
I have a viewer where you can actually look at this in the hexadecimal, but this is just a binary file. Um, it contains the code in binary format. Then what we say is gcc main.o dash o main. This will basically say now link this, which is the second phase of compilation, and put a file out called main. So if we run this now, then we should see that we have a main.o in a main. So the final step, just like on Windows, is we want to move the final executable out of the intermediate directory into the final directory. So we'll just say move bin dash int slash main into bin slash main, okay? So we're basically just moving it from this directory to this directory. And in Linux, I'm not sure if there is a <laughs> default extension, like on Windows, you, you would usually call this .exe but I don't think it really matters on Linux so long as it's a binary executable and then you can basically run this. So if we run this one last time, we can go into bin and if we list, we see one file main and it's highlighted green for me because if I were to run main, well, if I were to run dot slash main, then we get hello world. So let me run that one more time with a clear screen. I can now execute the file that we just created and make sure you do the dot slash otherwise it will not interpret it as a file but rather a command so yeah uh, and then if you want to just streamline this process you could just do uh, bash dot slash build dot sh and then bin slash main and then you can just repeat every time you need to compile and then run your program so now you can make changes to your main.cpp you can build it using this build dot sh and we'll talk about how to expand upon this in the future but that is the basics of compiling in Linux. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next tutorial where we will talk about headers and linking.